Hello, uh, Michael and Lynn. Hi. Some of you will have um, seen our Camino videos over the last couple of years. And uh, last year especially, a number of people asked us some questions about what we carry when we're on the Camino. So that's what this video is about. Um, and maybe just um, to help out, we've been walking on the Caminos for about 10 years. Yeah. Uh, and what we're about to tell you is where we've arrived at after 10 years, having made lots of mistakes. Yeah, we were really naive at first. Um, so about this time of the year in 2013, we made the decision and our first Camino was in um, May, June 2014. Yeah, so, so coming up next year will be our 10th anniversary. Yes. So over the last 10 years, we've walked the Camino Francais from St. Jean to Santiago five times, most recently last year. Twice we've walked on from Santiago through to Finisterre, and on one of those, we uh, after Finisterre, we walked to Mashia. Uh, we've also walked from Switzerland over the Alps down to Rome on the Via Francigena, um, and uh, a shorter Camino in Japan. Yeah. So all of our walks in Spain have been April, May, June. The Francigena was September, October. So we've experienced quite a um, range of weather um, from snow one year to, of course, winds, driving rain and heat. Yeah, so last year especially, we, when we walked in, in May of last year, it was heat wave in the north of Spain. So, so I guess we've, we've had all Ex of those experiences. Yeah, experiences now that have, um, we seem to have streamlined our packing uh, a great deal yes. um, to what works for us. Um, and we do utilise a few different things in different circumstances. So that helps with streamlining the packing as well. Yeah. So the other thing before we get on to what we carry in 2014, we stayed in albergues right across Spain. Um, and for example, our very, very first night on the Camino, when we left St. John, we arrived in Roncesvalles. The It just happened to be a May Day weekend. We didn't realize that the new monastery was complete. So they pushed us into the old monastery. Uh, any of you who've seen the movie The Way? It's the monastery that, where Tom met Joust. So we stayed in that, in that monastery 120 people in a room. Which was a um, big learning curve for our first um, night because um, we hadn't even slept in our sleeping bag ever uh, until that night. Yeah. So over subsequent Caminos, um, we um, mixed staying in albergue dorms with uh, private rooms. And last year when we walked in 2022 because of COVID, all the way across the Camino, we just booked the double rooms. Uh, as, as many as we could, double rooms in albergues, because a lot of them do that now. Um, but, so that will, that will temper what we tell you about what we take. Okay, so anything else I need to know? Or shall we just get into it? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so um, we'll start off by talking about backpacks. I suppose we should talk about is our backpacks. Um, all through my Caminos up until now I carried a Mountain Design 65 litre um, and it's worked really really well. I have no complaints with it at all. Looks a bit weathered these days but I loved it. Um, I have had issues with um, and my knee and at the end of 2022's Camino I said to Michael I felt I needed to downsize and so consequently um, we have bought a 48 Osprey for me and little did we realize until looking at the new backpacks and um, all the improvements that they've made in 10 years that actually my mountain design um, pack 
not packed, empty, is three kilos. And my new Osprey is 1.7. So there in itself, um, I've already dropped nearly a kilo and a half in weight by just a new pack. So um, anything else? Yeah, so a couple of things we realised in getting a new backpack for Lynn. So I've got a 65 litre Black Wolf. Um, neither of us ever carried 65 no. litres. No. Um, and even Lynn's uh, 48 litre Osprey Kite uh, with all this stuff in it isn't full. So one of our thoughts was, well, should we go to a 38 litre? Now, the reason we didn't, the difference in weight between a 38 litre and a 48 litre Osprey Kite is 80 grams. Like... Nothing. <laughs> nothing. And what we realised is, if you have a smaller pack, which is fully packed, and um, to the extent where all the sides bulge, then your side pockets become very narrow. So it's actually... Harder to access anything yeah. that you may want to put in those pockets. So for the sake of 80 grams, a 48 litre pack, and then if you do happen to want to take food or drink or anything extra on a day, there's room in your pack. Yeah, I will then carry, for example, uh, bread rolls or something that doesn't weigh too much, but um, it may be bulky. Yeah. So we'll utilise that extra space um, with items like that. Yeah. So both of our packs have pack covers for the rain, but as we'll tell you a little bit later, we both take with us really good rain ponchos. So the pack cover is only for light drizzle. Yeah, yeah. Um, and as a matter of fact, there has been issues that we've, we've come across with people with pack covers in the rain. Yes, uh, we did choose to do that um, the first Camino. So we only had a pack cover and um, a jacket. Uh, fortunately, we didn't have any really hard rain, but um, we have heard stories of other people that in really bad conditions, the rain does fall between your jacket and your backpack and it could collect in the cover and wet everything that's inside your backpack. Yeah, so we, we find if it's significant rain, we just put our rain ponchos on and away we go. Okay, so that's pretty much it for backpacks. So most mornings when we walk in April, May, even into June, uh, we would typically leave where we're staying uh, and we'd be wearing a Camino jacket, a fleece and a t-shirt. And then as the morning wa uh, warms up, you can shed your jacket and then shed the fleece. So that's pretty much uh, our daily routine. Okay, so this is my backpack loaded, ready to go. Uh, just waited, it's about eight kilograms all up. Um, one of the things that Lynn's worked out for us is we put our water bottles um, just with a clip hanging off the front strap. It's easy to drink while you're on the way and um, I've just got a Velcro to stop it from bouncing around. So that's pretty much us ready to go. And as I said, it's a 65 litre pack but it hasn't got 65 litres worth of equipment in it. So in the lid of my pack, I've got a pair of gloves, a beanie, some extra COVID masks, uh, a headlamp, uh, a cap, and a spare buckle in case I break one of the buckles on either of our backpacks and some spare shoelaces. Um, if it's really, really cold, I wear the beanie. If it's hot or it's raining, I'll wear the cap. And one thing I just thought of, uh, you probably know this already, but if you take your backpack off to go in to get a coffee or somewhere, uh, a good habit to get into is to do the waist straps up so they're not jangling around. When you wear your backpack, nearly all of the weight is carried around your waist. And if someone treads on your buckle while you're in getting a coffee, um, it makes it really hard. In the main body of my pack, uh, we've got some antiseptic wipes, uh, probably a throw over from COVID. A medicine chest with tape for feet and um, Panadols and anti-inflammatories and things. Um, my clothes are in two mesh bags. I'll unpack those in a moment and show you what I bring in terms of clothes. Um, our toiletries, uh, sunscreen and uh, uh, toothbrushes, etc. We take a, a little insulated box so that when we buy food, 
I mean, it's as light as, it's just, but it keeps uh, food relatively fresh while you're walking along. We've got a, a, a clothes sack and when our clothing gets dirty, we just chuck it into that. And then when it gets full, we know we have to do a load of washing and uh, just a spare tip from the walking poles, which I've never had to use in many years. So in one of the sacks, we've got uh, underpants, uh, three pairs of socks, one which I'll be wearing. Um, we've also got um, uh, long pants and long sleeve fleeces that we've never actually had to wear for the extreme cold, but we wear them when we get where we're going as pajamas or while our stuff's in the wash and that goes in that sack. I forgot to mention, I also have this plastic pouch that's got things like phone chargers and um, electronics, not that we have much. Um, obviously I'm using them at the moment, but that goes in the pack as well. In terms of clothing, I normally take three t-shirts, one that I'm wearing, and then at the end of the day, when you have a shower, you put tomorrow's t-shirt on, and when you get two dirty ones, it's a sign to do your washing. Good idea, if you're gonna take three t-shirts, take different colors. It's easier to remember then which ones need washing and which ones don't. Uh, a long sleeve t-shirt for when it's really cold or at night. And I take two pairs of zip off hiking pants, one which I'm wearing. And if you get a run of really wet weather, it's kind of nice to get to the end of the day and have a pair of really dry pants to put on. The zip off pants I wear uh, are lightweight hiking pants. I like the Columbia or Mountain Design ones with top pockets, um, side pockets. And you can see on this side, there's a zip and a, a Velcro pocket and back pockets. The reason I like the zip off hiking pants with lots of pockets, um, it's a bit of a story. Back in 2014, I had just a wallet that I kept in my side pocket um, and that I just had spending money for the day and I just put some money in it. Uh, went into a, a cafe, bought coffee for Lynn and I and then five or six kilometers down the road realized I'd left the wallet uh, on the bar after I paid. So what I try to do now is uh, I specifically have pockets for things. So in my uh, jacket pocket, I'll have our passports and on the other side, our Camino passports. In my uh, pants pockets, I'll have uh, my wallet with the spending money, in the zippered pocket, um, my credit cards. Uh, in one of the other pockets, it'll be my glasses and a map book that I take, and then in, in the last pocket, my phone. So whenever we stop, whether it be for lunch or just for a coffee, before we start walking again, I'd go through the mantra of passports, Camino passports, wallet, credit cards, phone, glasses, and I just do, you do that as a mantra, um, purely to help um, overcome the, the chance of forgetting something when you walk away. It's just a habit we've got into and, and having lots of pockets on your pants enables you to do that. The, the other reason is there's some mornings where um, you leave your accommodation and it can be one degree. So you've got beanies and gloves and all sorts of things on. Um, and it's not a bad idea if you've got extra pockets that when you're walking along, if you start shedding gloves and beanies, you can just put them in your pocket until you stop. Um, it just saves taking your backpack on and off, which sounds like a trivial thing, but when you're walking for 35 days, um, it, it makes a difference. So in the base compartment of the backpack, I've got my poncho, uh, our towel, a pair of sandals. So the only um, shoes I have on the Camino are my hiking boots that I wear and sandals for after you have a shower and uh, an umbrella, which believe it or not, is not really there for rain because we've got our ponchos, but it's great when you're in the middle of a heat wave and you want to keep the sun off your head and then when you get to your destination, if you go out to have some tea and you haven't got your poncho, etc., that's when the umbrella comes in handy. Okay, so this is my pack. It's an Osprey Kite 48. And as we said before, it's uh, one, about 1.7 kilos unpacked. Um, at the moment, it's got about just under seven kilos in it. So that's hopefully what I plan to, um, to carry this time. So in the top of my pack, I have beanie and hat, gloves, 
a scarf which comes in handy if there's um, a lot of bugs and also a bit more warmth um, some tish Kleenex tissue just in case you need to go to the toilet in the bush which I never have but it's good to have some antiseptic wipes which we've started using more so now after um, COVID and two buffs one i use as a um, headband the other one only in extreme heat to protect the the back of my neck so now this is the middle of my pack um so a knee brace which i have used on occasion but not always i have got a bad knee uh some more sanitized wipes the medical kit uh, this has a elasticized bandage and an array of compedes, um, tapes, band-aids, um, needle and thread and safety pins and betanidine ointment and liquid to, uh, and sterilizing pads to sterilize the needle if I have to address blisters. My toiletry bag. Three t-shirts, one I'll wear, a fleece that I wear through the day, a long sleeve tee, one pair of pants there and one I'll have on. I do take cycle pants for um, if it's a bit warm, either of a night or to sleep in. Thermals to sleep in mostly, but they do become another layer if need be, if it's cold. I'm a cold frog, so I need a bit more layering than Michael does. Uh, two bras, three knickers, three socks. I do take a pair of um, sock liners so that in the um, nighttime, when I'm wearing my sandals, if it's a little bit chilly, they're a thinner sock to put on over my, under my um, sandals. They're the bags that we pack our gear in. Laundry bag, like I think Michael mentioned, and a cotton tote bag that I take in the night with any bits and pieces that I need. And finally, um, in the bottom of my pack, I will have my poncho and an umbrella and my sandals and a really, really lightweight uh, pair of thongs. So that's all that goes in the bottom of my pack these days. Used to have a lot more but we've really streamlined down for this trip. So in terms of our hiking shoes, um, I've only ever worn Salomon Gore-Tex mid-height boots. I think the first pair I bought were GTX2 and now they're up to three, they're up to GTX four, I think. Yeah, these are four. Um, having said that, um, I never get blisters. It doesn't matter what I wear, I don't get blisters. Um, and I always wear thick socks with these boots, but I, I have no reason to wear anything else. They're as light as, um, they dry out really quick. They're and, very bend bendable. Yeah. So I'm very happy with those and I wouldn't probably change for anything else. So I love them as well. Um, one Camino, um, I lost my boots. Someone else uh, mistakenly thought mine were theirs. And um, I ended up in Burgos buying another pair, um, exactly the same, and wore them the very next day and didn't have any issues. You know how they say you're supposed to wear boots in before doing any long walks. Well, these were amazing. Um, they were like, I, they were a bit stiff of course, but within a day of walking, uh, I had no issues with them at all. Um, they, they, well, I have had one issue, uh, one year, uh, we were walking 2020, and um, I bought another pair of shoes. We, I'd had about five pairs by this stage. So I just got the exact same size off the shelf, uh, did train in them, but something in the manufacturing was different. And when we eventually did get to walk on our Camino in 2022, they were obviously a narrower um, cut 
and I did have issues with my boots and I had to end up um, throwing them away. And in uh, Estea, I went to a sports store and they didn't have any boots, Salomon or, or any others that I could buy. So I bought Merrell's shoes. There are men's because they're, they're now wider uh, across the foot, which apparently is the only difference between men and, and ladies' boot, uh, shoes. And they were really, really good. The only issue is they are heavier than even these boots and they let little rocks into my shoes. Being just that little bit lower, um, I did notice that little rocks got into my shoes a lot easier and um, I have weak ankles from all the sports I've played over the years and having the extra support of a boot for me just gives me that little bit more confidence when I when I walk. Yeah. Anything else you've got to? Oh well, no. And I guess when we say that they're comfortable, um, I wear mine on the plane going over to Spain because mm. they're actually mm. they're light and comfortable. So I think that's that's probably an appropriate comment to show you. And I think the most important thing, whatever boots you choose, is that it's comfortable, and that um, for you it works. Yeah. So, and that's, that's a really good um, point because recently, any of you who follow Iva's uh, website, there was quite a debate on about Gore-Tex boots. Um, some people hate them, some people love them. Some people say if you wear Gore-Tex boots, it causes blisters. Some people say that they never dry out. Um, there's a whole lot of stuff you'll read. The reality is, um, if you just look after your shoes, and when I say look after, if the Gore-Tex on any product becomes so dirty that the, the pores are clogged up, um, the Gore-Tex can't breathe. So we take an old toothbrush and if our boots ever become really muddy, you just wash them under a tap and, and scrape them out. But if you're worried about what type of shoes will cause blisters, I reckon blisters are probably a combination of what type of feet you've got, what conditions you walk in, is it hot, cold, humid, wet, dry, what type of socks you wear, the fit of your boots, are they too narrow, are they, have you allowed for expansion on your feet? And any um, length in the toe. Yeah, so, or if you're someone like me, I just don't get blisters. Yeah, so, I do, um, but I have learnt to um, reduce it right down by taping my feet yeah. and making sure I've got the right shoes. Yeah, so don't buy into the argument that, for example, Gore-Tex boots cause blisters. There's a whole range of factors so the one recommendation I would say is whatever boots or shoes or trail runners you end up walking in, they should feel so comfortable that you would have no uh, hesitation to wear them on the plane over because they're that comfortable. If they're comfortable, even if they only last a week, buy a new pair, mm -hmm. but, but that's, that's probably what we would say. Yeah. Yeah. Okie doke. second Canino onwards we've worn rain ponchos and the brand we purchased online was Tatonka Cape Men. Uh, they're a really sturdy poncho so we've been using them now for many walks over about eight years. They have a bulge that goes over your backpack. Uh, if, you don't, if you don't want the bulge if you're wearing your poncho without a backpack you can zip the bulge down if that makes sense. They have a clasp that clips under your, well, between your legs. It's really important because um, if it's windy, we've seen quite a few uh, ponchos that just flatter around in the wind. Um, so these ones are, are really sturdy. They keep you dry. If you get a, a day of torrential rain where you're walking in the rain the whole day, which we've had, then the bottom of your pants and your boots and socks get wet. Um, I guess you'd have to have uh, completely waterproof boots and gaiters or maybe plastic pants to get around that. Um, it's not a big deal for us. Your pants dry off really quickly. And even if your boots get um, absolutely saturated, we just go into a supermercado and buy a roll of um, uh, paper, stuff the boots with paper, and then the next day, if they're not completely dry, um, if they're Gore-Tex, as soon as you start walking, 
an hour or so they dry out anyway. So we're, we're more than happy with the ponchos. Um, yeah, so, so that's, that's a pretty good purchase for us. Okay, so we both use hiking poles when we walk. And the hiking poles we've used for the last 10 years um, are Pacemaker Journey hiking poles, which we buy online from a camping store in Texas. Uh, they're cheap as, not expensive at all. And there was a, a guy who had uh, a Camino trip whose YouTube channel is Manger on the Hill. He recommended them. And so we just went on spec and we have been so glad oh, that we've used them. Yeah, they are so good. I think that anyone that's a little bit more mature maybe and not as light on their feet, definitely need to invest in walk, uh, walking poles. They have saved me from falling um, so many times in really um, bad places that I could have really hurt myself. So, and they, me with bad knees, they save my knees going uphill and definitely coming downhill. They help you break against the, the downhill force and save my knees a lot of wear and tear as well. Yeah, and, and I think something that Lynn pointed out to me a, a while ago, when you walk, even, even on the flat, when you walk with hiking poles, um, it seems to be that it keeps you in a more upright mm. position. Mm. You don't tend to... The, As you get tired, yeah. you start to bend forward. Whereas with hiking poles, you don't, and it, it just seems your posture seems to be better. Mm. But the, the thing that we, we really thought we'd mention, with these particular hiking poles, um, you know how hiking poles have rubber tips? It is really, really common on the Camino that people get a couple of days in walking on hard surfaces and the rubber tips they wear out. Wear out. These particular hiking poles come with a big foot, a big rubber foot, um, and Lynn has used hers for 10 years, and they don't wear out. This is them. Yeah, this is I them. I can just see there's only a couple of little yeah. worn pieces on them. And um, I had to replace a couple of mine, not through wear. I put my hiking pole in a drain, and the drain pulled <laughs> it off the edge. And I even uh, went online and bought an extra six of the actual rubber tips from the hiking stores for when they wore out and they're pretty much, apart from the one I replaced, we've still got them. Mm -hmm. So even if you've got hiking poles, um, you can go online and buy these particular tips and they work a treat. Mm, great. Yeah. Okay, so that's hiking poles. Yep. Okay, so that's just a little of our experience in what we take on the Camino. So maybe just to wrap this up, a couple of things by way of tips that we've come up with over the last couple of years. So uh, if you've got a mobile phone, we find that when we get to, uh, we normally fly into Barcelona, when we get to Barcelona, we go to the Vodafone stand and get one of their 20 euro SIM cards. Works a treat, you get phone, uh, phone calls, text messages and internet access. Uh, internet is quick and, and you get a lot of downloads. If by any chance, uh, you do run out before the month is up, just go into any supermarket, Supermercado, give them your Vodafone telephone number and you can add an extra 10 or 20 euros to your phone card. Uh, we, we both do that. Um, in terms of uh, food, most cafes, and certainly if you stay in albergues, uh, generally have a pilgrim menu, three course meal, uh, first course, salad or pasta, lots of carbs. The second course uh, is normally meat and chips. And when I say meat and chips, that's all you get, <laughs> meat and chips, and then some sort of dessert. What Lynn has found uh, she does a lot of the time is, if, if the, you don't really want the meat and chips, the second course, you can have two first courses. So maybe uh, paella and enchilada uh, as, you, as your two meals. And if you don't want dessert, often you can just say, can I have a coffee instead of dessert? So it's pretty easy. Um, and the last thing, this probably applies more to people from New Zealand and Australia. How do we get there? We fly uh, Emirates, Sydney through Dubai, Dubai through Barcelona. The flight we take gets us into Barcelona about 
1.30 in the afternoon. So we spend our first night in Spain in Barcelona. The next morning we get a train to Pamplona and from Pamplona uh, a bus or a taxi to saint jean pierre de port if that's where you're starting. We've done it a couple of different ways. We've caught a train all the way from Barcelona through to Iron in the north of Spain, gone across the border to Bayonne and then caught the train from Bayonne down to saint jean pierre de port That works as well. But uh, there's just a few things we've picked up if that helps. So hopefully there's some good stuff in what we've presented. Um, no doubt when we come, we're off to Portugal soon. When we come back, we'll have learned something else. So if you did get this far, thank you so much for listening. And uh, buen camino.